For many people, traveling by train is just a way of getting from one place to another. But for a few, it's a magical time. They are the railway enthusiasts, and their principal enjoyment is to see and experience all aspects of the railway, as well as recording its history in books, photographs, and on film. We're in a train heading up the old Midland Railway main line to London. Our cameraman is Richard Willis, a resident of Leicestershire, who has travelled to London as part of his quest to make a series of films about the principal main lines of England. The Midland main line was one of the later trunk routes to the city, and its crowning achievement was the great Gothic-inspired railway station of St Pancras, situated alongside the older King's Cross in Euston Road. The railway companies of Great Britain were the Victorian age's technological giants, and the great entrepreneurs who led them wanted to show the world their importance. The grandest ones built suitably impressive termini in London, capital of the British Empire, and thus the most important place on earth. The Midland Railway outdid them all with its St Pancras terminus and hotel, surely the epitome of Victorian grandeur, and opened in 1868. Here we see a centenarian St Pancras, which had fallen upon hard times. Like the British Empire itself, it was all faded glory by the 1960s when Richard Willis filmed it, although its architectural achievements were still unblemished. The nationalized railway could not afford to modernize the hotel, and it fell into disuse, being converted into office accommodation thereafter. Inside the train shed, the train still had steam at the head, this Stania Black 5 having brought a semi-fast in from Nottingham. The atmosphere of a great terminus in the 1960s is well captured here, with period advertising hoardings and signs in evidence. The fashions also date this to the time when the Beatles had just changed the music world. This was a time when everything was changing. Railways were thought to belong to the past, the car being seen as the future of transport. Despite massive sums invested in new rolling stock in the 1950s, the Beeching Report of 1963 was to admit that the railways couldn't expect to carry on as before, and that certain types of traffic, such as excursions, illustrated here by a special arriving from Stoke behind another Black Five and a Fairburn tank, would no longer be catered for 